So, welcome. We are going to tune the room. If you'll remember in our last video, we had the Helmholtz resonators, which are these up here. And you'll notice what we've done is we've created a hole pattern in each of these and behind those panels is a layer of damping material that will take the sound, convert it to heat, and dissipate it. So this is the opposite of what one would think of a Helmholtz resonator. If you'll remember in the first film, the Helmholtz resonator was described as the same thing that a musical instrument has or a Coke bottle. If you blow across the opening of a Coke bottle, it sets up a resonance and you get this woo sound out of it. Same thing when you're playing a violin or a guitar. Um, it sets a resonance up inside of the body of the instrument or inside the body of the, the Coke bottle and it creates a louder sound at a specific frequency. So the Helmholtz resonators are doing exactly the same thing here, but instead of amplifying the sound into the room, we're taking the peaks of what are in the room and running it through here what we're doing is putting in a resonant frequency, separating that out from the room, and dissipating the sound. So the woo sound is coming into the chamber and being dissipated. So here's what we're going to do. My first step is to get up here and cover every one of the resonators with cardboard. So the cardboard is going to stop the resonators from doing anything. It's just going to kind of block them. We'll make a room measurement that I'll show you. And basically, we're just going to sweep a single tone through the room. We're going to measure that tone, find where the bump is. Let's get started. So here is the last of these cardboard pieces and we're going to put over the Helmholtz resonator. And you can see that it, it's just covering up using the cardboard here to cover the resonator and just a little bit of duct tape on the sides and oh, actually makes kind of a door. <laughs> but, um, so this completes that phase of it and then so now the sound can't actually get in here uh, very easily and we'll uh, we'll cover it up just just a little would your mom always tell you about not using your teeth? Well, I'm here to tell you, as long as you're careful, it's all right. Okay, so we're ready to get Bob and set up the sweep generator, measure the room, and see where the peaks are. And what's interesting about covering these resonators up with cardboard, as I've just done, is I can tell you that just by the sound of my voice, by just being in the room, they're doing something. It makes some difference. I don't know what. So we're certainly hoping that the theory from Mr. Helmholtz, uh, as calculated by uh, our chief engineer, Bob Stadther, is going to work. But it, they are doing something. The room does not sound quite as good with the cardboard on them. So something's going on. Let's take a look. Okay, so Bob is hooking up the, uh, the microphone and we are going to put pink noise on the woofers. So when we have pink noise, the sound will come out of the woofers behind here and it'll give us a broad spectrum of all the frequencies and what is it, Bob? Is it rolled off like one one third, as opposed to white noise? It's uh, one third per octave or something. It's um, three dB per octave, so it's equal. Equal energy. Equal energy per octave. So it's equal energy per octave. So we're going to put that, and that's what pink noise is. So that should be a completely flat signal going through here. We're going to look over here at our microphone and then see on the RTA what the room response is. And from there, we can start tuning. So that's just the, oh, there's the sound of my voice. 
And that's the back. Oh. Okay. So that's the spectral analysis of the frequency response of the room. And so we've got something out here at about 150. That microphone. Probably not yeah. enough. I don't know. Oh boy. So now you can see Bob's got a single tone going on there. And you can see the response. You can see we've switched over to one of the lab generators, and he's got this set now at 30 hertz. So here we can, we can move this up, move this down, and you, you probably can't hear on this little microphone that I'm using, but that's the big resonance we have. It's 25 or 30 hertz. Can you, so yeah. See, see if you can find the peak. Uh, I can find the peak right there. Right there? Yeah. Yeah, it's low. So now, okay. vary it and see if there's a... Okay, so we're gonna vary it and then, so there's 20 back up to the peak of third. Um, a little lower, I think. Okay, a little lower. All right. Well, that's good progress. We'll check that. Okay. And then if we pull... Okay, and it's it's also I might mention if you notice it's it's hot as hell in here. The air conditioning unit broke, and okay, so that's right at a hundred dB. Okay, so Bob is now putting plugs into the resonant holes, and you can see he's making the resonator move up in frequency. What effect that's going to have, we're still not sure, because it is quite loud back here still. <laughs> so that we are now at about 28 hertz. Right, is it having any effect at all, Bob? Not that I can see. I filled about half the holes. Yeah. And it's about the same? Yeah. Okay. Well, I wonder if it's going to take more. I wonder if we should take, we could maybe do a measurement and take all the cardboard off. We now have the cardboard off all the resonators, so Bob's going to start back at 18 hertz. And as a reference, at 18 hertz, okay, so is that the same level? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is 87 dB. That is... Boy, 88 dB. Sorry, what's what's the conclusion? Not significantly. It's not, not a whole hell of a lot. Oh 80, Lord. 87, 89, 88. You know, and of course the meter. I realize this. I forget more yeah. than one is. So it's just a dB difference. Or two. Maybe a couple of dB difference. And it didn't move the frequency, so it maybe isn't worth tuning them. Two there. Two dB there. However, up when we in here, okay, like around 60, we got like a 4 dB dip. So the the most I've seen anyway was at 60 hertz. We had a 4 dB dip with the resonators active. Yeah. Uh huh. And 55 was all, was a 2 dB dip. 3 dB here. That, I mean, that's the most significant yeah. thing I've seen. So 3 to 4 dB of a dip. So the frequency is high. Way high. By... Factor of 2 and a half. Uh, yeah, an octave and a half. Hmm. Well, was Helmholtz wrong? Couldn't be wrong. Everybody's <laughs> trusting him. Wrong. We're wrong. <laughs> oh crap.